Hi, I'm Ryan Penny and welcome to The Catholic Sphere. This week, our diverse Catholic guests tell us how they are working to spread the faith to all corners of the internet. First, we have with us Ethan Stevie, co-host of The Crunch Podcast. He joins us from Oklahoma. And up next is Damian Shalanda, the co-creator of God Sparks, which you can find on Instagram and YouTube. He's joining us from Illinois. We're also joined again by John French, who is the mastermind behind John is Catholic on TikTok and Instagram, which garners the attention of Gen Z. John is joining us all the way from the land down under in Australia. Ethan, let's start with you. Can you tell us about your journey to the Catholic faith? Yeah, absolutely. I my journey was very short. It was I was born and then I was baptized. So it was a very a very quick journey for me. I was raised Catholic uh, in a very loving home. Uh, my parents were very faithful. Uh, brought us to mass every single Sunday, even on vacation. So that's how you know that it was a real, uh, legitimate Catholic upbringing. And uh, I have been in love with the faith ever since uh, a conference that I went to in high school. And that really set me on fire. And, and ever since then, uh, evangelizing, learning about the faith uh, has been a big part of my life. Yes, it was a similar youth conference for your co-host, Patrick, that helped to ignite his faith. And a few weeks ago, we had him on the show. And is this your uh, co-host of The Crunch? Can you tell us about him? Uh, tell us about The Crunch and what it is. Yeah, so The Crunch is born out of the kind of Catholic social media movement that started when a lot of us uh, Gen Z Catholics were on social media after having these sort of conference and retreat experiences. We were on fire. A lot of us were going to public schools, and we didn't really have a platform uh, to share maybe in the way that we were hoping. And so naturally, we turned to the Internet. And out of that, Patrick and I met each other. We thought we were both pretty funny. And we thought that we both had a lot of really good ideas. And so one day I asked him, I said, do you want to start a podcast with me? And the, our first episode was just about dating. I think neither of us had girlfriends at the time, I think. But we were qualified enough to speak about the topic. And from then on, we started doing an episode every single week. And it kind of chronicled our journey uh, growing into the Catholic faith then as college students and now as we're both married men and we have children. So uh, it's really been a journey uh, through our vocations uh, and our growth in uh, our Catholic faith. So obviously the dating advice that you were sharing with people worked because now you're both married and you're still keeping up with the dating topic, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a segment on our show called, not aggrandizing myself, but it's called Dr. Ethan's Dating Corner. And it was a small segment at the end of our show every single week. And we got so many requests from people because this is such a hot topic now for young people is navigating relationships and asking girls out and discerning marriage. It's, it's huge for people. And we ended up expanding it to be a whole separate show from our main podcast because we just had so many requests of people asking us for advice. Most of the time it boils down to you just got to ask her out, my man. You, you just got to be brave. Um, but a lot of times it's complicated and people are in some really tough situations. So we've been able to help. And even some people have gotten married because of the advice that we've given on our show, which is a pretty cool thing. Yeah, not difficult to understand at all why that's been incredibly popular. Damien, can you tell us about your faith journey? So I was born and raised uh, Catholic. Uh, I'm from Poland and I moved to the USA nine years ago. And I would say, you know, I was Catholic my entire life but not 100%. So I was attached to some things and it was really hard to give it up. And actually in USA, it was around three years ago, uh, that's when I founded St. John Kentius Church in, in Chicago. And I went to the general confession and I finally realized that I have to be a real Catholic man and I want to live my faith 100%. So I met uh, awesome people. I joined the young adult group in St. John Kentius, and I developed beautiful friendships here. Amazing, yeah. Keep hearing a lot of fantastic things about St. John Kentius Parish. It was voted the most beautiful church in America at one point, and not surprising, it is a thriving youth community where you met Emily, your co-founder of the God Sparks. Can you tell us about your friendship with Emily and, and how you met and decided to start God Sparks together? 
Yeah, we met at the young adult groups, uh, her and a few more friends, which I am still hanging out with. And I think it's a beautiful friendship. We definitely want to um, inspire ourselves and make ourselves more holy. So we won't grow in holiness. And I think that's where uh, idea of the of the podcast uh, came from, because we want to uh, challenge young adults, uh, inspire them and to starve for holiness. I think that something is missing in our world is basically that people are afraid to be holy. They stopped believing that it's even possible. And we think that everyone is called to be holy and we're trying to encourage people, challenge them and inspire to do to take this path. Yes, and letting them know that it's possible. And when they see a team like you and Emily and you're practicing your faith and you're, and you're able to articulate and share your faith, undoubted, undoubtedly, uh, that's inspiring. And that's what's happening. And that's why your Instagram account has grown so, so, so much and so quickly, which we're going to talk about more in this show. So, John, to you, you were with us a few weeks ago. Can you give us a little bit of a refresher about your social media pages with John is Catholic uh, for those who may not have seen the first episode. Yeah, for sure. So uh, John is Catholic is a page that I run on Instagram and TikTok. And really, it's just various forms of different Catholic content. You know, we got skits, as we mentioned in the previous weeks. Uh, we got lightsaber fights against priests. Uh, also, just more devotional videos to the saints. Uh, and also a mix of, of different, more serious videos uh, about uh, people's spiritual journey and how they can kind of grow in their relationship with God as well. So really, it's just a, a diverse bunch of all sorts of content, but everything is related to Catholicism. Now, how many of your followers and the people you communicate or engage with are people of faith? And how many of them just uh, kind of stumble upon your page and have no belief system at all? Yeah, it, it kind of it kind of depends from platform to platform because TikTok, really, the, the way the, the TikTok algorithm works, it will just kind of spit out a video to anyone uh, or anything. So it's not really catered to a specific audience where I think Instagram, it's a lot more fine-tuned. Um, as far as my, my goal for who I am targeting with the videos, and it seems to be the case on Instagram, it's really people that are already in the church. Because I had this discussion uh, with one of my brothers when I first started out on this venture. And really, I think you're never going to convert someone in a TikTok comment section or, or any uh, comment section for that matter. Uh, it's, it's just the way that it is. But I think uh, if you encourage people that are already a part of the church by restoring hope through your videos, maybe in those personal relationships that they share with people that aren't a part of the church, they're going to notice the change that it makes in their friends that are already Catholic uh, through the inspirational videos. And that, and then that in itself is going to encourage them to maybe consider the faith. Um, and so that's really where my goal is, is lying, just restoring faith, in, uh, restoring hope in the church. And uh, yeah, so far it seemed to be working. So you're talking about, you kind of start with those who already have a little bit of faith and lighting it on fire and inspiring those people and that hopefully that kind of inspiration will lead them to change the way that they conduct their lives, which will have an impact in real life outside social media. But that inspiration can, can obviously start there, which is definitely mm -hmm. true. So Ethan, I want to know what the interactions with your followers look like. You not only have normal engagement through comment boxes and, and direct messages, but you and Patrick are also on an app called Discord. Can you explain what Discord is and how those conversations differ from what you're doing on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok? Yeah, and I think this builds off of what John said about the struggle to convert someone in the comments. Uh, it's, it doesn't really work because you don't have a real relationship with a person. And so Discord was our uh, project to try and build a relationship just with our audience first and foremost, but then also with people that we meet on Instagram or on other platforms. So if you're familiar with Slack, Discord is more of a casual version of Slack where you can have a lot of people in one community, but there's lots of different topics of conversation. So for example, in our Discord, we have about a thousand people. We just crossed a thousand people in our Discord. 
And those are people who listen to the podcast. Those are people who find us through Instagram, through Twitter, any social media. We say, hey, we're trying to build a, a thriving, beautiful online Catholic community because a lot of people, they don't have any in-person Catholic community. So yes, in those conversations, we talk about the faith and we talk about apologetics. We talk about prayer, but there's also a channel for sharing recipes that you're making. And there's also a channel for sharing the video games that you're playing. And maybe you can link up with some other people and play some video games with some fellow Catholics. Maybe you want to talk about uh, cars. Maybe you want to talk about sports. That way, we have lots of different areas for people who have different interests because, let's face it, we can't talk about Catholicism 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're, we're human beings. And so the goal is to create a well-rounded human experience as much as you can on the Internet. And we've found that Discord is the best place to do that just with all of the features that it has and the ease with which you can invite people into the community. And we've seen some really, really amazing relationships, in-person meetups and friendships grow through that Discord community that we've built. Amazing, yeah. We're seeing this a lot where people are seeing people of faith, seeing Catholics on social media, talking about just normal everyday things that a lot of people can relate to and using that as a starting point uh, mm -hmm. to draw them more deeply in to what matters most, the Catholic faith. So it's incredibly effective. It's not surprising at all that this, ha now you say you have over a thousand uh, followers on, on Discord and engaging in that conversation. That's fantastic. So Damien, how many of your followers and the people you communicate with are people of faith? How many just kind of stumble upon your page and have no belief system, are kind of skeptical? You know, what are you seeing with that? I would say the most of our interactions are on the Instagram. That's uh, our biggest account, uh, around 16,000 followers now. And I would say probably 50% of comments are positive. And another 50% comes from the people who are not in the Catholic Church, uh, which I still appreciate. And there is a lot of conversation. I see the people, other people uh, interacting with those comments and, and giving the answers. Uh, and we, uh, we basically, we are not doing a lot of engagement with those negative uh, comments. We only like or have some very short answers to the positive comments. And we don't want to get into the conversation in internet. We know that it can really quickly go really <laughs> wrong way. So we want to kind of stay away from it. But we definitely have, we have a decent amount of interactions. Yeah, because perhaps conversion, as we were just talking about, doesn't happen in a comment box on a social media page, but maybe it can get the thought process going in somebody's mind. Um, and maybe further down the road, when they do meet a Catholic in real life, that seed that was planted from something that they saw on social media, God can use that. Um, just happen to throw out those seeds and God can use it. So John, and one of the ways that you're throwing out seeds is you're telling the stories of the saints. Can you, so, can you tell us about your saint series on John is Catholic and what inspired you to start doing that? Absolutely. Um, I, was, I was raised, born and raised a cradle Catholic in a very large, uh, very devout Catholic family. But really my devotion to the Catholic faith only really became uh, really strong when I entered into university for uh, studying theology. And it was in my first semester that I began to study Christian spirituality. And so much of that is about the interior life, particularly uh, a deep dive into the lives of the saints. Uh, and I remember we, we looked into the lives of St. John of the Cross and, and his story of the Dark Knight. And of course, St. Teresa was your. And really that just, that, that burnt alive my faith uh, in a way that had never ignited it before. And I, I felt the need to really share that with other people. And it's been obvious to me that that is not unique uh, to my experience. People seem to really resonate with, uh, with, with the, the stories of the saints and, and their personal trials and all the things that led them ultimately to attaining holiness by the grace of God. And so, yeah, really, I, I just wanted to share that um, online with other people. And so I've done that uh, through various different ways. One, just by sharing 
uh, each individual saint's stories. But I also had an online series called uh, The Last Words of the Saints Before Death. And um, that, that seemed to really touch a lot of people. And uh, I think it, is, it has made their faith stronger as a result. Yeah, when it comes to communication, there's nothing more powerful than telling a story. And when you combine that with the stories mm. of the holiest people who have ever walked this earth, then that is, uh, it's no surprise that people are drawn to that and want more and more of it. So, Ethan, you have very strong convictions about Catholic Twitter. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, it's, that was my, uh, that was the streets that I grew up in, uh, to, to say it one way. Uh, my first foray into social media was by building up a, a Twitter account that I've since deleted. I deleted it right before the coronavirus pandemic, which was probably a good thing in hindsight, given how the discourse changed uh, in 2020 and 2021. But I believe that Twitter has, uh, or X now, has a unique value in that it's one of the most customizable social medias. And I think that a lot of people uh, have a misunderstanding because they've maybe seen some things that are unsavory or they see conversations that are not charitable. And they think, well, that must be what all of Catholic Twitter is, or that must be what all of this platform is. But I think that as a whole, when we look at social media as Catholics, and this is how we should look at everything in our lives, is we need to approach it with intention. What am I using this for? Why am I here? What am I trying to get out of this time that I spend on this app? Uh, very similar if I'm reading a book or if I'm going to work somewhere. What, what am I doing? What's my intention? Am I just in my mind or am I present and actively engaged with the work that I'm doing? And so I think that if people were to take an intentional approach and think about what do I really want, I have artwork hanging up in my home that was recommended to me by people on Twitter. I do exercises in my home gym that were recommended to me by people on Twitter. There are prayers and books and saints that I, I know about and that I've read because of things that I've seen on Twitter, all because I've excised the bad and I, and I get rid of the things that I, I don't think are uh, helpful. And you can cultivate things that are helpful for you and you can just block out all the rest of the noise. So I think a lot of times Twitter or X gets a bad rap because by default, it's pretty inflammatory because that's how they make money. But if you were able to go into it and think, hmm, these are the types of things that I want to learn about. These are the ways that I think my faith needs to grow right now. You can find it and it's there. And it's been a very beautiful thing for myself. Uh, and I've met a lot of friends through the app. I mean, Patrick, who was on a couple of weeks ago, who I've done a podcast with for seven years, we were in each other's weddings. Uh, we met on Twitter. And so that's, it's pretty difficult for me to, to write it off as a whole. Uh, so I think it has a great value if one is able to approach it in the right way. Yeah, like other forms of social media, it's morally neutral. It can be used for good. It can be used for bad. And uh, clearly you've been able to draw a lot of good out of it. And it looks like many Catholics in the world are doing that as well. So, Damien, your channel started off with long form content, uh, similar to The Crunch where with their long form podcast. Now, how are you using it? Can you tell us how that has grown and evolved since it started just a few months ago? Yes, we started with the long form content uh, on the YouTube. Uh, we started with the interviews of our friends and uh, ourselves and telling our own journey, faith journey. And it's doing really well uh, around our community, around our friends. And we see that, you know, we have positive feedback. The people really like to hear those more personal stories of their friends and people they know. But a few months ago, we got the idea to start short form content. And, you know, we realized that we can much quicker get to the bigger number of, of people. So, and Emily was, you know, very excited about it. I was very excited about it. And we decided that we'll be focusing on short, short form content to reach more people. Uh, but still, if we have some, you know, good interview coming, good ideas with some of our friends, uh, then we will still be doing it. Uh, but definitely in those days, 2024, the short form content is the, is the leader. Short form content across the board seems to be like the way that uh, social media accounts all over the place are using to draw people uh, into their audience base uh, to great effect. And that's the case with all the social media platforms. But John, what do you think 
in comparing the social media platforms, what do you think are the pros and cons of each one? So Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, you know, what are the strengths and, and weaknesses of each, do you think? Yeah, I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, um, and that is that TikTok really just spits out uh, videos to anyone and anything. And so, uh, whereas Instagram and YouTube, it's a lot more fine-tuned to a specific audience. And so I think that allows for a, a lot more community building. Uh, another thing about Instagram is that the comments section doesn't really have uh, a word character limit, whereas TikTok does. I think it's a, a 60 letter uh, character limit on TikTok. And so that doesn't really allow much space for longer form kind of dialogue and, and discussion that is really productive in, in uh, converting souls. Whereas Instagram, uh, it's a lot more personalized and I think it allows a, a lot me more people to consider their faith more seriously just by engaging with people online through longer comments and, uh, and personal DMs as well. Right, so it seems like when you, the emphasis is, is on the social aspect of social media, Instagram might have a leg up on TikTok in that way where you can actually have some of that community, have some of those conversations. Uh, which is especially important, obviously, in the context of evangelization. So, Ethan, the Crunch bio, your bio for the Crunch on YouTube says, the only comedy podcast going to heaven. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> yeah, I think Patrick and I both have a love for comedy, uh, for telling jokes, for telling funny stories, for making each other laugh. I think one of the big things that we saw when we started the show back in 2016, we were 19 at the time, 19 and 20. And one of the issues that we had with a lot of Catholic podcasts is that we were just a little dry. Um, sometimes th these conversations about the faith, sometimes these conversations about the catechism and the scripture, uh, although engaging and informative, uh, sometimes may le leave a little bit to be desired in the humor department. <laughs> and so we saw that and we thought, well, we like to have a good time, you know. We're we're Orthodox uh, Catholics. We can we can joke around and then stay true to the faith. And so that's been an, the niche that we've kind of chiseled out for ourselves is the ability to have interesting, intellectual, uh, deep conversations about spiritual matters, about important things going on culturally in our society and within ourselves personally. But there's always levity because. I mean, if we just are honest about the, the situations in which people are listening to podcasts, they're doing the dishes, they're driving to work, they're in between. They need something on while they're doing something else. They're, it's moms at home folding laundry, it's dads at work doing a repetitive task in a spreadsheet, and they have the podcast on for entertainment purposes at the end of the day. And both of us are not, we're not experts at teaching. And so we figured we'd much rather lean into the comedy. And I think that's that's what a lot more Catholic content needs. And people like uh, John and other short form creators uh, do emphasize that that comedic aspect. And I think that's wonderful. And we're seeing more and more of that grow. But we just like to have a good time. And sometimes it gets us in trouble because we go a little bit too far. Uh, but we we try to keep it reined in as best as we can. Uh, I think comedy is a great way to ascertain truth. And uh, we try to put that into practice every single week on the show. Comedy is a great way to ascertain truth indeed. It can kind of, that levity can kind of open up people's minds and hearts and, and kind of melt the iciness around them wanting to have the conversation about the faith. It's incredibly important. We do need more of it and thanks be to God that you guys are doing that. So Damien, you've been doing marketing and, 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 f and photography work for some time now. Can you share with us about that experience and how you use those skills to help you run the GodSparks accounts? Definitely the, the knowledge of the marketing and how the how powerful the social media are. Uh, I realized that, you know, having something that to spread the message, good news to so many people is just is just perfect tool. And let's make it clear. I think that the social media in general are bad, but like every tool, it can be used in the right way or the wrong way. And we're trying to use it in the right way to get to as many people as possible. And as a photographer, I you know I, I have an experience with the camera and being behind the camera, creating the videos, editing them, all around that. But definitely my co-founder, Emily, helps me with being in front of the camera. 
how to behave, you know, what to do, how to talk, and ev everything around that. So marketing experience is was necessary. I I will, wouldn't say absolutely necessary. I think everyone with the phone and camera can start their social media account and spread the good news. So now, John, before you became a Catholic social media evangelist, you were active on social media for years. What would you say to someone aspiring to start a Catholic social media page? Yeah, probably two things. Um, firstly, don't try and be someone you're not, um, because I think there is a temptation to try and compare yourself to online creators that already exist, like Father Mike Schmitz or maybe Matt Frad. But really, it's going to be your own personality that's going to shine through and, and reach people, because people, like whether it's online or in person, people are going to be able to sniff out inauthenticity from a mile away. So just just embrace who, who you are as a person and, and that'll be reflected in the quality of the content. Um, beyond that, I think it's just learning the basic tools. So, you know, what makes a, a video uh, perform well? So that's a strong hook, uh, hashtags, using popular sounds, um, just really making sure you're uh, maintaining people's attention throughout the video because, look, this short, this short form content, it fries our brains. We've lost the attention span. And uh, yeah, like just really narrowing in on, on maintaining attention, but also not compromising the quality of the content at the same time. So it's really, it's really just finding that balance. Well, everybody, if you're not thoroughly convinced enough already that God Sparks and the Crunch podcast and John is Catholic are worth going to check out on social media, then you need to go check them out on Instagram and YouTube and Twitter and even Discord if you use Discord. So thank you again, Ethan, Damien, and John for joining us today. And thank all of you for joining us. Don't forget to join us next week with our host, Father Joseph Mary Wolf, right here on The Catholic Sphere.